Gateway election, everything on the ballot this special election. Humboldt County submitting a final election night report. The position of the Fire Protection District Director tied for now. How it happened, plus what happens next. The North State's news starts right now. Tonight at 11, it's election night. The polls are closed. The results are coming in. We have a clear lead for a fifth board member at Gateway Unified. Poll workers are working to count in-person votes. Max Tedford is live with more on the progress. Chico residents are asking the city to support a ceasefire in Gaza. Why a city council member threatened to shut the meeting down. Yeah, this is not what we were promised, the American dream. You know, I don't see the American dream. I think it's American nightmare right now. Surveillance video caught the unbelievable break in robbers using a backhoe to break into a convenience store in the Bay Area. What the owner has to say about policing in big cities. Your local news starts right now. Live local breaking news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. Within the last half hour, we do have some semi-official results. One of the biggest elections is the fifth board member position. So far, Casey Bowden is leading with about 57% of votes. Camille King has about 42% of votes at this time. There are These are the preliminary numbers. We're still waiting on official results. It's been nine months since former Gateway Board President Cheryl Clifford resigned after several failed attempts by the remaining board members to appoint a replacement for the special election, which is being paid for by the Gateway Unified School District. 5,000 plus voters had the opportunity to cast their vote for either Casey Bowden or Camille King. Bowden was endorsed by the Save Gateway group, while King told Casey, KRCR she was running on her own accord. Measure A was also on the ballot tonight. So far, 92% of the voters are for the measure, with almost 8% against it. This measure would allow for the Shasta Fire Protection District to establish a standalone Shasta Fire Department along with a Fire Prevention District. Going hand in hand with it is Measure B. So far, 89% of voters are in support, with almost 11% voting no. Measure B votes to approve a Shasta Community Service District tax regarding a parcel fee, which would be a special fee to help fund the creation of the district if Measure A is passed. Let's take a closer look at some of those preliminary results. We will dive in closer here. Those results will show up on your screen shortly. There they are. Uh, Camille King is leading right or is at 42.12%. Casey Bowden is leading with 57.8%. Now this is at your Shasta County website. You can also look on any of your mobile devices. Right now, Measure A is at 92.1% with no at 7%. Now, if we go down to measure B, we're at 89.58 with about 10.4 voting no. Now, I wanted to show you the turnout for this voting. If we look right here, this was updated 55 minutes ago and zoom into the districts right there. You can see that over near Shasta Lake, the color yellow indicates that 10 to 20 percent of people actually voted in this voting session right there. Now in West Redding over near the Shasta area, it's a little higher with about 20 to 30 percent, but turnout was low. Now, if you look over on the corner of your screen right there on the right, there was a total of 9,470 total registered voters with ballots cast under 2,000. We will dive into that a little bit more when we check in with our live reporter. In Humboldt County, Kent Scowden and Babbitt Johnson are tied for the Garberville Fire Protection District Director. They both have exactly 45.14% of votes, exactly 144 votes each. Christopher Brackett is also in the race with 9% of votes. The polls are closed. The ballots are being counted. Some members of the public are there to watch. The North State's News' Max Tedford joined poll workers along with watchers tonight for Shasta County's special election. Max, what was it like as they counted ballots? Well, Ariana, when I was downtown at the county clerk's office, there were well over a dozen poll watchers. So many, they were having to take turns watching the poll workers do their jobs. Not that there was much to see, though. 
People crowded the halls to watch the ballot counting system in the process. After months of back and forth on how these votes would be calculated, several people were there to make sure the heart voting machines, along with the process of counting votes, worked smoothly. County Clerk Kathy Darling Allen says thanks to today's low turnout, it's been the perfect day to test the new system. It is not a bad thing um, training wise for us to have um, an election to conduct that's smaller before we get to March, which will be a very large, very busy and complex election. Allen says today of the 9,500 registered voters who could have voted, only about 122 showed up in person. However, no matter how few, she says all the ballots will get run through the system. Now, they were just getting underway with the tabulating the ballots when I was there a couple hours ago. However, the low turnout should mean a relatively faster count. Now, reporting live in studio, I'm Max Tedford for North States News. For the latest on breaking news, download the KRCR News Channel 7 mobile app. It's free. All you have to do is search KRCR in your device's app store. Don't forget to turn on those push notifications to get alerts about wildfires, traffic alerts, plus all the latest local news. Now let's head over to the Weather Center now to check in with First Alert Meteorologist Brian Schofield. Brian, you know, there wasn't too much wind today, but that might actually change. Yeah, some breezes today, and we're looking at ramping it up a little bit more for tomorrow. We're not talking about wind advisory level winds, but uh, definitely the nuisance style winds that show up 20 plus miles per hour, do a little more than blow your hair around. But uh, for the most part, we haven't seen strong winds today, but you've heard it probably some of the microphones out of some of those live shots, you know, blowing around a little bit. You can see through the early morning hours, at least computer models are keeping it in the valley. We're not seeing it everywhere, so it's not, once again, a widespread major wind event but it's something worth mentioning because it certainly can be a little bit of a pain at times, I suppose, getting stronger than a breeze out there. Satellite radar shows things very clear right now, looking good. And even with our 12-hour precision cast, it's not showing much happening either. And that really will be the theme for the next, oh, at least tomorrow, and maybe a portion of a Thursday before we start to see things ramp up and maybe wet down a little bit more. But in the meantime, overnight lows are going to stay on the cool side. If uh, tonight is a little chilly for you, tomorrow should be a lot more chilly for you as the temperatures will drop even more. We're going to stay breezy at times uh, before we start to cool things down even more and then big rain and snowfall. I'll show you when it gets here. Yeah, we're talking about snow in the upper elevations and maybe dropping a little lower than that in your first alert forecast coming right up. For the first time, our voices as Muslim, Arab and Palestinian youth are finally being heard after years of advocating for an end to the unrelenting violence inflicted upon Palestinians. However, it seems to be falling on deaf ears here in Chico. Chico City Council threatened to shut down tonight's meeting as Butte County residents are asking the city to make a statement in support of a ceasefire. After hearing several comments from the public, the city of Chico chose to take a 20 minute break. Council members came back threatening to clear chambers if there were any more outbursts. I think it's absolutely within your purview to be concerned about Palestinian citizens being affected by an international tragedy. I implore you demonstrate support for our Muslim and Palestinian communities, as well as our Jewish communities. This is a global issue impacting us locally, and it is important for our city council to please demonstrate what the local people feel, which is support for all, but also there is a global issue that is setting a precedence that we need to address. Despite overwhelming support, the Chico City Council did not comment or make any decision involving adopting a solution for a ceasefire. A man was arrested after deputies found thousands of feet of stolen copper along with stolen items in his possession. The Sutter County Sheriff's Office says they were called to a Rio Lena home after a string of thefts in South Sutter County. Deputies say 38 year old Daniel Morris was caught with 2000 feet of stolen copper wire, a stolen trailer along with other stolen items. He was arrested then booked into Sutter County Jail with bail set at $15,000. The stolen items were returned to the their rightful owners. In Oakland, a backhoe was used to break into a convenience store. Take a look at this. The heavy machinery broke through bulletproof glass with thieves targeting an ATM inside. All of this effort as the suspects came up without any cash. Reporter J.R. Stone spoke to the store owner who says tens of thousands in damage was left behind.
surveillance video showing a backhoe crashing through the bulletproof glass of this AMPM store on West Grand Avenue in West Oakland on Monday morning. Watch as the backhoe is eventually used to tear apart the ATM. They tore up the whole front. That's at least $70,000 worth of damage. That is Ali Abdullah. He is the owner of the AMPM store that was damaged and chose not to show his face due to safety concerns. He says the clerk who is working is okay. Outdoor surveillance video shows the masked individuals first breaking into the store with the backhoe, then backing a white pickup truck to the entrance. Soon they can be seen pulling out a chain, which you can see. They then tried to connect to the damaged ATM. Abdullah says the chain was not long enough to connect to the ATM, so when the would-be thieves heard sirens, at least one jumped into the back of this pickup and drove off without even taking anything. I was born and raised in Oakland. I'm 51 years old. I've never seen nothing like this. I think the only way you can run a business in Oakland is you maybe have to, as soon as you close, you sleep in your store and stay locked and loaded with an AK-47 and just be ready because the police is not coming on time. And I'm not blaming the police. There's just not enough of them out there. Abdullah says he is frustrated by the thousands of dollars worth of damage to his store and also upset over what has happened to other businesses in Oakland. He wants to know where his tax dollars are going when it comes to public safety. This is not what we were promised, the American dream. You know, I don't see the American dream. I think it's American nightmare right now. When officers arrived, the backhoe was still there but no signs of the vandals and a heavily damaged store. In Oakland, J.R. Stone, ABC7 News. Houses are gaining value, which is good for homeowners, although troubling for those trying to be homeowners. More people are having to work multiple jobs to make ends meet. Starbucks is handing out raises in 2024. Big stories, local impacts, next. First, here's a live look over Reading from our House of Rude Law Skycam. Calm, cold weather for us right now before the wind comes out to play. A look at our full forecast in just a bit.